Today, we are diving into our NRF52840 dongle and setting it up as a Bluetooth peripheral. By the end of this video, you will have your own Bluetooth device up and running, connected to your smartphone using NRF Connect app and logging data over serial terminal. If you are just getting started with this dongle board, do check out our video in the top right corner. Namaste and welcome to Avinashi Tech. Let's open VS Code. Move to NRF Connect symbol. Click on create a new application. Then create a blank application, select desired folder and save a completely new project. We will be naming our project nrf 2 underscore ble underscore peripheral. Once we are done with this, we will create a build configuration and select our dongle board as target. Leave everything else to default and hit the build configuration at the bottom. A few moments later. So you can have a look at our main.c file here. Pretty much empty right now. We will now move to NRF kconfig GUI. Under subsystems and OS services section, we will check mark Bluetooth and then select peripheral role support. You may click on the right hand side I option to get out more info about a particular configuration param. Moving down, we will leave most of the settings to default. Make sure the param max pair device at a time option is set to 1. As in my case, it was set to 0, even though its default value is 1. Anyway, then under Bluetooth device name, we select the name that we would like to be displayed while scanning by any other Bluetooth device. I will update it to my channel's name. Once we are done, let us click save to file option and select prj.conf file. This is your project specific configuration options that will later be combined with other global configuration options from kconfig file. Alright, so before we move further, let's talk about what we are looking to achieve in this example. So we have our dongle board with a user button available on it and our dongle would be a Bluetooth peripheral device advertising and sending status of its button while a smartphone with NRF Connect app will act as a central device and connect to our NRF device. We will be sending some log messages over UART using our TTL module to our serial terminal software Hercules. The client, that is smartphone, will enable or disable notification for the button status and receive pressed or released info from our NRF device when we physically press the button on board. Let's go through our code. In the start, we have header files for UART GPIO button and Bluetooth. Next, we initialize a GPIO container for our button. In our device tree file, we can find alias of our button which is SW0. So basically GPIO pin and configuration flags are specified in this structure. For displaying data messages over UART, we will set up basic UART configuration. We have already talked a bit on using UART with NRF52840 dongle in one of our previous videos. Do check it out. Next up, some variable and macro definitions for Bluetooth. We have our Bluetooth device name from config file and UUID for our service and characteristic. So basically this is unique identifier and it is randomly generated. You can use any online available tool for it. We have opted for a 128-bit UUID. Remember that the last byte would be displayed first 
on our client side app. You may witness that in a while. There is a semaphore used in Bluetooth initialization sequence to wait for further execution of the thread until Bluetooth is ready. It kind of acts like a green flag to proceed further. Then we have some basic advertising and scan response data. No BR EDR specifies this is not classic Bluetooth but BLE or Bluetooth low energy. And we basically advertise our service UUID as well. So even if a device has not connected yet, it can know the registered service ID. We will see it soon. Next up, we register our BLE service, then characteristic. Characteristic properties are notify and read, while permission is read only. You may look out at other properties and permission available. Lastly, we have a CCCD or client characteristic configuration descriptor which is kind of like a flag to enable or disable notification with uh, permission of both read and write. A basic URTX function is available just below it. There is a callback function on underscore CCCD underscore changed which is called when this flag value is changed and action taken accordingly. We have send underscore notification function which basically takes connection info, data to be sent with length of the data buffer and if notification is enabled by the flag, we finally say goodbye to our data, hoping it reaches our client side app. Once we send the data, callback function on underscore sent is called and a simple message is sent over UART to be displayed on our terminal software. Next, we have connection based callback. One is called when device is connected and the other is called when device is disconnected. Each with its own message set to be sent over UART on success. Lastly, we have BT underscore ready function which is called to enable advertising data and register connection callbacks. In the end, the semaphore is given back so that the thread can continue execution. In the main loop, we have first section for button GPIO configuration. Next section for Bluetooth. Here we take the semaphore back either when Bluetooth is ready or after timeout. The last section is for UART specific configuration. In our while loop, we look out for notify underscore client flag and if it's enabled, we read the status of our button pin and send the message according to the status. We repeat this once in a while after a certain delay. Alright, let's see the device tree file. So here we can look at the button input pin button 0 as well as UART pins in board. Alright, time to build our application. Now let's see the schematic of our dongle board and relate the pins with it. So yeah, button pin is connected to pin 1.06 and we need only URTX pin here which is 0 0.20. Rest 3 pins of UART are not needed in our case. We will open NRF connect for desktop app and after connecting our device, upload the hex file. Once uploading is complete, let me take out a smartphone with NRF Connect app already installed on it. After giving necessary permissions to the app, we will scan for available devices. There it is, Avinashi Tech. If you click on it without hitting the connect button, you can see the advertising data info. Notice the service UUID is being displayed as discussed. Click on more and you can see some more info. Alright, let's hit connect. Once connected, you can see the message received on our terminal. We have our service with UUID mentioned here along with its characteristic. Remember the order of bytes that we talked about? Have a look and compare. 
let's enable notification so in default state button is released let's press it and again release it okay let's disable notification cool the terminal receives messages wherever mentioned so you have your device as a bluetooth peripheral finally nice do not forget to show us some support by subscribing our channel and make sure to like and share this video signing off